Hey everyone, welcome to Johnny How To. So this should be a little bit more of a fun tutorial, not quite as technical as far as computer or digital software skills, but more of the traditional special effects type of way of doing things. So if you've seen, and hopefully you have, spoiler alert from the 1980s and early 90s, if you haven't, if you haven't seen Raiders of the Lost Ark, the first Indiana Jones film, there's a scene near the end of the movie, I'm going to show a short little section of the making of in just a second, to where they have, once they open this Ark of the Covenant, they have all these kind of ghosts coming out and kind of flying around. And this is pre-digital era where they didn't have computer graphics to help create these things. And yet those effects completely hold up. So I'm gonna show you just this brief little snippet of this making, and then we'll talk about how it can translate their approaches, use some of those, and then also enhance it using digital means as well. So let me stop this really quick, and then I'll go ahead and play this for you. And the ghosts, you know, they were actually real little miniature ghosts, you know, with cloth and everything, but they shot them underwater in slow motion so that they would put them on little sticks and they'd sort of fly them around in this little windowed pool of water against a black background. And that gave them this kind of surreal, floaty feel. And that was, I think, one of the best effects. Uh, so just a small little snippet from that, but basically what we needed as far as knowing or giving you a little bit of a glimpse behind how they went about doing that. And if you want to see what one of those looks like when it's not composited, this is kind of hilarious to look at. We have this example right here to where they're actually working on it. And you, and you can see this is made out of basically what they usually use oftentimes is cheesecloth. So cheesecloth is this cloth that, well, you would wrap cheese in it, but uh, it doesn't fall apart when it's underwater and it holds its form, but it also has that transparent see-through. And you can see they're just lighting it very strongly as well. And when they're actually doing this, they would have this submerged underwater in a huge fish tank they were using. You saw in the making of, they had very, very detailed ones. But for the background ones, you can see this is very, very simple. Just probably with a little Sharpie, just drawn right on there. And that's actually what you see on the big budget, huge release of Raiders of the Lost Ark for Indiana Jones. So let's go ahead and jump in and talk about how we can do something similar now. Well, first off, all you really need to do this is a small fish tank, and you can go as ghetto, low budget as you want with this. Here is the original footage that we shot in class just one afternoon, and this is just a very small fish tank underneath it and behind the glass. We just have black poster board, and this little ghost right here was literally made out of toilet paper, so they took a a wire hanger for a shirt and bent it and basically hooked it around and taped it around with just scotch tape and then drew a little face on the toilet paper, put it into the fish tank and just flew it around under there and you get this nice ghostly cool kind of surreal effect. Looks super cheesy by itself but similarly so did the ones they actually used in Indiana Jones when it actually wasn't being used. If we go ahead and take at another example that was done in a later time, here you can see they're actually using that cheesecloth. You can get an extra kind of better look at what cheesecloth actually looks like. It has a little bit more texture to it. You can see it's not going to fall apart. And this is shot at a higher speed. So newer cameras, even phone cameras, can be shot at up to 240 frames per second. So you're going to get a lot smoother kind of slow motion than you would otherwise. Though in software like Nuke and After Effects, you can slow down things a lot after the fact using optical flow technology. So with that being said, let's go ahead and look at this shot just a little bit. And I'm not going to break down the entire composite. I just want to do a very, very short uh, kind of breakdown of how this was done. And in this one, it's not going for a more serious look and just more of an example, but also kind of going for a more kind of fun, kind of a Tim Burton type of look and effect on this. So let's go ahead and walk through this just briefly and see what we have. So first off, we have the original footage. And uh, this has been denoised in another program. You could denoise this inside of Nuke as well, but I used another program. And uh, also, I think it had already been slowing down uh, separately, so I didn't have to have Nuke processing that as I was working. The actual uh, coat hanger, I think, was wrapped in electrical tape, so it would show up as black, so that would get dropped out later on as well. And you'll see why we shot it against black as we go down the line here a little bit in doing this very brief look at the composite. So all I'm really interested in is obviously where the ghost is at. So a quick roto shape and using an end node just to cut out that section. If we brighten this up, you see there still is a lot of the background left and we kind of want to get rid of that. So basically scaled it up a little bit. Let me go and fill this to the screen. 
desaturated it to get rid of some of the blue tint in the original footage and then color corrected it and then did the histogram. And the histogram is basically what brought down the background to mostly black. So you don't have any of the background left over. We just want to have the ghost and nothing else left over. If we go ahead and continue, do a couple more color corrections just to give it a little bit of a tint and also added a glow to it. And this is one little section where I use an expression to have it kind of pulse the brightness as it's moving around. So you get this kind of pulse and would be the best way to describe it as, as far as its energy or as it's moving around. So it's kind of a pulsing effect. And then from here, we added an overall glow to make it look as if it is actually emanating light and glowing around the environment. And from here, we have our background, which is just a Google image background, and uh, reformat it to its, so it's cropped to the size we want. Did a few different techniques to actually cut it out. And so the main thing to kind of take away from this, if you want to do something like this on your own, is when you shoot something against black, like we did here, and you actually get the background to black, like we had to do in a couple of these nodes, even though this doesn't have an alpha channel, to cut it out so it's not shot against a green screen or a blue screen. And obviously I wouldn't want to try and roto this. There's all kinds of small little edges and it's organically flown. It'd be almost impossible to roto. You can still extract it and put it on your new background just by doing a regular merge. But instead of using a over as your operation, you use a screen. And what a screen basically does is it, it, it kind of mimics the effect of if you took two film negatives back in when films were mostly shot on film and expose them together with light. And so what that basically does is it drops out the dark areas and it keeps the light areas, but it gives it kind of this see through effect, which for a ghost effect like this is exactly what we want. So, so far so good. The last step that we kind of needed to do to make it look like it's in the environment going behind the tombstone and the crone, things like that, is just to basically create a mask through various means and use a Chemex node and key mix back on top the tombstone and the crow. And then we just do a number of color corrections and transforms later, and a little bit of camera shake and a little bit of film grain. And you get your final composite that has a fun reveal to it where you see just the crow at first, then you see the ghost in the graveyard. So a little bit of storytelling just to the camera move and the camera shakiness and things like that. And of course the film grin gives a little bit more of a gritty feel, even though that might get uh, taken out through the YouTube compression. So hopefully you can kind of see how fun and useful you can, this technique can be. And honestly, as much fun as the software is, when you actually get to physically create things like as simple as this is, there's a little bit more of a reward when you do that. One, it's a little bit more tactile. You can feel what you're working with and it's easily reusable. The great thing is, is you can do as many takes as you want here and you're not doing any cloth simulations. You don't have to relight it and re-render it. If you want to relight this, you just move around the lights in real life. If you want to give a different take on what it looks like, you just go ahead and move around that hanger in the water and you go ahead and you get the looks that you want. The only thing I would really mainly say if you want to try and do this on your own is go ahead and uh, go slightly higher budget, which I wouldn't call this higher budget at all, and use cheesecloth. That way it's going to survive throughout multiple takes instead of using something like toilet paper. Uh, and then even our smartphones can shoot up to 120 or 240 frames per second. So I think probably cameras aren't going to be a limitation at all. And again, even with this very first footage as low quality, especially the original, as low quality as the original footage was, it still works fine in the composite, the final composite. So I don't think that budgetary constraints should be any type of concern. So with that, hopefully really fun to take a look at. Thank you very much for watching. If you happen to do or experiment this with this at all, please go ahead and post your links and your videos so I can check them out as well. It's a really, really fun technique that for the longest time I had no idea how they did in Indiana Jones. And I'll see you on the next Johnny How To.